Hey YouTubers, wanted to um, give you a brief tutorial about an important and very effective upgrade for the Harbor Freight and similar blast cabinets. And that relates to the metering valve. Uh, you probably know that the suction tube arrangement on the Harbor Freight machines is really rather poor. And lots of guys make the decision and the right decision to upgrade to a metering valve. Now, there are typically uh, two kinds of metering valves that are available. I want to uh, tell you a, a little bit about both of these, but I also want to introduce you to an improved metering valve that um, we sell. And I'll give you all the links down below this video. First of all, all of these... Um, work in the same way. They attach to the uh, removal panel, the door, if you will, at the bottom of the cabinet where you simply need to drill a hole. The hole should be about an inch and a quarter. Might need to be just slightly larger. You take the top fitting off any of these three different metering valves. You insert that with the washer and then you screw this in and then this is this component of all three of the metering valves so we'll just go past that because that's the same for all three all right so uh, a lot of guys are facing the choice of buying this um, metering valve which is made from pipe parts or this which is cast aluminum and a lot of guys automatically assume that this is a manufactured piece and so it has to be better. Um, I want to tell you that these are actually very good metering valves and one of the reasons I think they're so good is because they have a very large internal volume here. So when you go regulating the inlet air, there's a lot of mixing space. So what's happening is that your media is falling down here, obviously through the door, the hole in the door it's collecting here and you're essentially providing a suction on this end by how your gun is operating and you're regulating the amount of inlet air I like this large volume in here because I think it provides for a lot of turbulence which basically means that it's potentially picking up more media all right, some guys like the cast valve. It's basically the same sort of idea, but you'll notice just looking at the outside of this that there's a restriction as you go back here, and there's less volume up here in the area of the, um, of the air inlet valve. And uh, again, I kind of like this, but a lot of guys like this, that's perfectly fine. Now let's talk about a couple of accessories. A lot of these valves um, are sold with these plastic plugs, which are drain plugs, so that when you've got your media there, you can undo this, the media falls out, you know, everything's, uh, everything's copacetic. The problem with these is that you can see on mine, and I bought one of these years ago, and I immediately um, tossed it to the side anyway I'm glad I kept it to show you is that the threads on these are plastic and you can cross thread this and the threads start to get all boogered up I like the metal um, uh, square head plugs because you know these things are going to last essentially for four lifetimes okay your grandkids are going to be using the same thing a hundred years from now and they're going to be happy with it a couple years from now you're going to be cursing this thing when it doesn't stay in there. I recommend these valves. Okay, so there's another component of these, and this is the air inlet valve. They're really three different styles. I have two of them to show you. You notice that all of my uh, metering valves here are set up with this kind of air inlet valve. This is controlled with a simple 90 degree twist, okay, no tools. All right, it's a brass valve, it's heavy duty, it's gonna last a lifetime. The other kinds of air inlet valves include this kind, which I absolutely hate. There are two holes drilled in the side. There's this mechanism with some sort of nylon um, uh, stop um, uh, nut, 
and this knurled thumb screw. Okay, but to turn this, you basically need two hands to do it, and you're never really sure where this is just by looking at it. You know, when it's this way, you don't know whether you have it open, whether you have it closed. Also, remember that this is underneath your cabinet. You're having to lean upside down to look at it, and look what happens. Even when the nut is down, I can still turn this, which means it's not really locked in place. This, so much easier to use, no problem in its use. Now, there's one other style, and that other style is kind of like this, but it's got, and it's metal here, which is better, okay, so it's going to wear better, but it requires a hex um, wrench, okay, an Allen style wrench. And so you need to turn the Allen style wrench and then set this lock nut. And basically it requires two hands. And once again, you can't really see where the thing is. I like this because I can instantaneously look at it and know whether I have it halfway open, mostly closed, mostly open. I can adjust it literally in a fraction of a second. This is the style to go. Don't like this. Don't like the other one. All right. Now. We've talked about some accessory pieces. Let's talk about this in general. All right, let's put this back in. All right, one of the things that you don't really get to see is what the inside of this chamber looks like. So what I've done is I took one of these and I cut it open so that you can see what the inside of this chamber actually looks like. So this is a cutaway you're looking right in here and I want you to see two things first this is a constriction it gets very very thick walled in here which means that your available mixing space for your air which is coming in here and your media which is coming down here and then making the 90 degree bend is getting essentially trapped in here and it's slowing the speed of the air movement which of course is slowing the speed of the media movement. So we've gone ahead and improved upon this in what we call the high flow design. So let me show you what the inside of the high flow looks like. Here again is a cutaway. So what we have here is a milled out throat which reduces this restriction, takes this step out of here, and opens this up and actually, there is a 50% increased cross-sectional diameter here than here, which means that this is essentially flowing 50% more efficiently. In addition to this, the second thing I wanted to show you, the standard brass barbs that go in the end here look like this. They're good pieces. But you'll notice they're flat on the end here. And when this goes into the standard valve, and it would sit about like that, and you look at it, you can see that as that media is coming down, it's hitting the flat end of that fitting right here. And it's causing what I call bounce back. The media is hitting that, it's bouncing back, and so the flow here is contaminated by some media particles going this way, which is what you want, and some media particles going in the other direction that bounce back. What we do is take this, mill out the inside to increase the, the inside diameter a little bit, but it takes this flat out. And so instead of having this circumstance, okay, where you've got the flat right after the step, we put a bevel in there. And that bevel then is smoothing the transition, which is already smoothed up here because we've enlarged the cross-sectional diameter and taken out the step. That looks like this in terms of the standard um, brass um, barb fitting versus our milled fitting. Okay, so guys, here you have it basically three choices in terms of getting rid of that terrible terrible siphon tube that comes with the harbor freight and the eastwood and the tractor supply and all of the entry grade blast cabinets because i think they're all probably made in the same factory in china somewhere this one 
which you shouldn't dis just dismiss out of hand because it's made out of plumbing parts. This is actually a very, very good valve because of this large volume. You've got this one upgraded with the um, better air inlet valve and please the metal plug, not the plastic plug, because you're not going to be happy with this. All right. And so this is a good, a good valve. But if you want to do a little better than that, the high flow valve, again, we mill out to take out the step, increase the um, cross-sectional diameter, and we mill the barb to work with this. All right. Which one is better between this and this? Well, there's no question. This is the better valve. Which one is better between this and this? You know, quite honestly, I think it's a toss-up. I'm actually going to try to perform some flow, uh, some very simple uh, flow tests to try to put some numbers behind it. You can go either way. This is less expensive. It's a little more expensive, but it's whatever you like. All of these are available on our site, which is listed below, um, partswasherupgradekit.com. Uh, again, please see the link below. And uh, I hope this has um, been helpful in terms of uh, demystifying a little bit about how these things work and the comparisons between the cast, the improved cast, and the pipe-based metering valves. Also, guys, on our site, you will see a variety of our complete uh, upgrade kits that include um, the airflow baffle, blast gate, guns, foot pedals, hoses, clamps, the uh, dust cyclone for, um, for those of you who um, use a vacuum system and want to keep your, um, your vacuum filter from getting uh, filthy dirty after just a couple of minutes. And uh, we're also now supplying guns with different size uh, orifice for the different kinds of compressors uh, that you you guys have. These come complete, ready to hook up to uh, the hoses, got the right fittings. They come with the uh, nozzle. Please be careful. A lot of these are sold without nozzles, and then all of a sudden you realize that you need to buy a nozzle. You need to buy, uh, you need to pay shipping. So again, check out our site. And if you have a parts washer, uh, we have an upgrade kit for your parts washer as well. So please uh, see our site for all your upgrade needs. Thanks very much, guys. Stay safe. Talk to you again.